I want us, as the Holy Spirit's already here, I just want us to worship Jesus and exalt his name. I love this little song because it says, be exalted in the heavens. He's exalted here in the earth. We're, we're going to magnify his name and glorify his name. Hallelujah. And every part of this message, every part of the word that goes forth, it will not return void. It is, hallelujah, being watched over by the Lord himself so it will accomplish what it's intended to, to accomplish in our lives today. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Lift your hands to heaven. We praise your name, Lord. We glorify you. Be exalted. You're worthy, Jesus. Hallelujah, you are worthy. And you deserve all the praise and all the glory, all the honor, Lord. It belongs to you, Lord Jesus. a great job. I want you back up here at the end of the service. Amen. You may be, well, keep standing. First Peter 2, 9 says, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the praises of the one who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Hallelujah, you may be seated. Thank you, Jesus. When we talk about being a chosen generation this morning, we're talking about a generation that's been picked out, a group, people group that has been picked out. That's me and you, this generation. From whatever age you are, young or old, you're part of this picked out, chosen. The elect of God, the offspring of the Lord. Some translations say a peculiar people. But in this, in this particular verse, it means God's own possession, belonging to him because he purchased us. Look at somebody next to you and say, you're his treasure. The next part of this verse says, the priesthood, a royal priesthood, it's talking about, it's symbolic of Christians. Because of the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus, they've been brought into a relationship with God. And they have become devoted and consecrated to him and him alone. When you're a part of the royal priesthood, you walk with the kingly authority that God has placed upon us as believers. We're a holy nation. We've been set free. We're pure. We're clean. And there's a reason that he says in this scripture, we've been called on. We've been uh, chosen. We've been selected. We we have been asked to come and be part of this royal priesthood to show forth, to declare and proclaim and make known the goodness of God, the praises of him, his excellencies, his goodness, his kindness, his, his mercy, his grace. Isaiah, can I have a little bit more mic up here because I'm straining, brother. Thank you. Uh, Isaiah 63 says, 7 and 8 says, I will mention the loving kindness of the Lord and the praises of the Lord according to all that the Lord has bestowed on us. 
and the great goodness. And the next part of this verse goes down and says, surely they are my people. Because when you're a people of God and you have been brought out of darkness into his marvelous light, you are going to testify and show forth the praises of him who has set you free. You're going to talk about his virtues. You're going to talk about the characteristics of the Lord and the workings that he's done in your life. Can you say amen? Today I'm going to talk to you about the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I want to talk to you about this season that we find ourselves in and the process of the anointing. Some people might feel like when you speak of the anointing that you're talking specifically about gifts or about talents. But, or it might be an emotional thing to you. If you see someone expressing themselves and they seem to be a little emotional, oh, they're anointed. Or they might be in a, uh, you might think of gifts or talent, oh, they're so gifted. They're so gifted in this area or this area. They can sing or they can preach or they can teach or they can, they're, they're great at helps. Whatever, you might look at them and say that they're good in their talents or their giftings, but that is not the anointing. Those giftings and those talents are given to us without repentance, the Bible says, but that's not the anointing. Say, that's not the anointing. The anointing is what is you are called to do, required to do, that you cannot do without the power of God. God gives us these gifts and talents. And our gifts and talents, when we flow in the gifts and talents that we have, there's nothing wrong with that. But many times when we're working in our giftings, man's compliments is what we receive. But when you're flowing in the things of God and we do the things that God is asking us to do, it requires the power of God. So I don't care how well you can move in your giftings, if it's not anointed, if you don't have the Holy Spirit of God anointing you for the things of God, he's wanting to anoint you to accomplish the things that within yourself and your talents and giftings you cannot accomplish. You have to be able to accomplish the things that God is calling you to do because the anointing of the Holy Spirit will come and rest upon you and you'll be able to do the things he's asking and it will be for his glory, not yours. Can you say amen? He gets all the glory. Hallelujah. Because we don't have what it takes within ourselves. But I want to look at Abraham and Sarah for just a second. God had promised them. And he promised Abraham, he said, you're going to be the father to the nations. Your descendants are going to be as many as the stars in the heavens and the sand on the seashores. And Abraham waited over 25 years and there was delay. The child that had been promised to Sarah that had not been able to bear children had not yet happened. And so she decided, well, Abraham has a gift. Abraham had, a, Abraham had other sons. He had a gift of making babies. She decided, I'm going to give you my maid. I'm not being crude. Just listen. Because God has delayed us having the child of promise. I don't know why there's a delay, but here, Abraham, take my servant and go and make a baby. Pretty much, I'm putting it in everyday English language, okay? And so Abraham and, his, and the maidservant had Ishmael. And what looked like, can I just tell you, delay is not always denial. That's right. I want you to look at me, and I want you to listen cl closely. Ishmael was not God's promise. They had the gift to make that baby, but it wasn't the promised one. They got ahead of God's timing. You need to listen to me this morning. That's important. Many times in our lives when we don't feel like God is working fast enough in what we feel like we are to do in the kingdom or in our everyday life, we don't see the results of things moving as quickly as we want them to move. We try to put our hand in it. And we tried to move in our gifts and our talents. And we try to make a way for ourselves that God has not ordained. Nobody's saying amen. They got ahead of God. But see what the difference is. God wanted to give Sarah and Abraham a baby. Because he wanted to speak to that dry and barren womb that had not been able to conceive 
And he wanted to touch that thing and make it whole so that a baby would come forth, the promise of the father. He wanted to fulfill his promise. They got ahead of God. It wasn't the promised one. And we, we suffer from the consequences of that decision even to this day. But let me tell you something. God said, I want to touch the dry, barren place so that when people see the promise come forth, Abraham and, uh, and the maidservant won't get the glory. Sarah won't get the glory. God will get the glory for the thing that he has done, the miracle that he has performed. You might be here this morning, and you might have found yourself in places like this at times, and you're working your gifts, but God is calling you to be anointed. Those living in the anointed are marked by the Holy Spirit. Say marked. I'm here to tell you this morning that as the chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's possession, you're called this morning. Every person under the sound of my voice, either in this tent or online, you are called to be God's anointing. The Israelites had come out of Egypt, and they now found themselves in a desert place, the wilderness, the dry place. And God told Moses, he said, I'm giving you de detailed instructions for making a holy anointing oil. The scripture gives us one of the most beautiful and complete oil on how he works in our lives. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry. He gives us a, a complete type of the Holy Spirit and how he works in our lives. And he does a supernatural work within us. God was going to call out men to consecrate them and anoint them. But he was calling them in the desert place. He was going to call them in the wilderness place. When you look up the meaning of the word wilderness in that verse, in the, the scriptures in Exodus, do you know it actually means mouth? It means speech. God was going to speak in the dry desert place, and he was going to call out and anoint men to be separated unto him, consecrated before him, marked for the ministry and service of the Lord. Well, what does that have to do with me, Miss Rebecca? Because when God calls us and he anoints us, it's because of Jesus and the cross, the blood, the burial, the resurrection, the ascension, that we're chosen and anointed. There's four spices out of the chapter in uh, 30 in Exodus that were used in this anointed oil, and I want to talk about them for a minute, because they are a type and shadow of Jesus and the Holy Spirit working in our lives. And the olive oil was used as a base. But before I do that, I want to tell you a story. I tell you, y'all are so quiet. Listen. Listen. Jesus. Mananda. I tell you what. Look, he told me to come up here and all hell has come against me this week. And I've been sick for three days, hardly able to move. I'm here to declare a word to somebody in this house today. And I don't know who you are. And I don't know why he chose this. But you need to listen. You understand what I'm saying? This is a serious matter, what God is trying to do in your spirit today. And to him be the glory. I'm not fussing. I'm just telling you, I feel the anointing. You might not feel it, but I feel the anointing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. This is what I want to share with you. I was in a friend of mine. We were in Bible school together. We had grown up together. Our families were close. And we, but we went to Bible school together, and we were roommates. And I noticed that when I was younger, my daddy would go to the store, and my mother will remember this, and I know my sister would if she was up here. Daddy thought, bigger, better. I mean, I don't care what it was he was buying. The bigger the, the thing, the better. So he would buy us what we thought was perfume, but it would be in these big containers, and it was toilet water. It had a sweet smell, but it was water-based. You hear what I'm saying? So I thought I was somebody to have this big old bottle, and I'd spray myself, think I smelled good, but after about five, ten minutes, the smell was gone. But I noticed my roommate had something different. She didn't just take a bottle and spray herself all over and turn around and get every area, you know, thinking she's smelling good like I was. She had this little bottle of perfume. But before she would put the perfume on, 
she would take the creams and the lotions and apply it to her body, her arms, and her hands, and her face. And she began to layer on the fragrance. The creams and the lotions matched the smell of her perfume. But this is what I want you to hear. She would take her little bottle of perfume, and where I'm spraying everywhere and it's not lasting, she would take it and she would smear it, rub it on her arms. And she marked herself with that scent. And you could smell her coming. It wasn't offensive. It didn't smell cheap like the sisters, <laughs> whatever that water was. It smelled, the fragrance of it was lasting. She marked herself with the oil-based perfume. The Lord said, I'm going to call out men, and I'm going to anoint them, consecrate them, and mark them. And he told Moses the, the five ingredients, the base being the olive oil. And then four, the Bible calls them principal spices, which means they were costly. They were pure. The first one was myrrh. And it came from a little shrub that had thorns and this gummy substance would come out. It'd be oozing out of the plant. And sometimes the bark of that little shrub would have to be cut to get a, a, the flow of the gummy resin. It had a strong fragrance. It was sweet smelling but bitter to taste. As believers, how does it, I want, I'm applying this symbolically of how the Holy Spirit works in our lives. The Holy Spirit in our hearts and our lives, he comes and he begins to work and to, to start to smear on us and rub on us the things of the Spirit of God. And he does it so gently sometimes and, and, and he layers it so and applies it to every area that needs to be worked on. Whether it's sin issues in your life or attitude city going on or offenses or hurts or discouragement or depression, God sends his Holy Spirit and he begins to work in the hearts of the believers dealing with all of those issues. And when you speak of myrrh, about 17 times in the Bible, myrrh is mentioned, and every time it deals with death and burial. Well, what does that have to do with me, Miss Rebecca? We must die, hallelujah, to ourselves, to our, our flesh, and allow the Holy Spirit to come in and work in us to prepare us to be the anointed one. And as he comes in, that place of surrender, grace is applied we die to self, to our selfish ambitions, and God can be glorified. The next spice is cinnamon. It comes from a tree that grows about 20 to 30 feet high, and it actually has very stiff evergreen leaves. It grows straight. But if you look at in the English language, we pronounce it cinnamon. But in the root of it is called kinnamon. And the kenna represents fire. I spoke on fire months ago, I guess. The fire of the Holy Spirit burns away all the dross in our lives, the things in our lives that would hinder us from being the, the saint of God that's called and anointed, those issues that hinder us in our everyday walk with the Lord. The fire, oh, I love this next part. Not only does the fire uh, cleanse us and purify us, our lives, so that we will take on the image of Jesus Christ, but also it sets us on fire to become that passionate child of God with a heart for the things of God so that we can accomplish his purpose in ministry. But I love this next part. So that's kenna. But the men part of that actually means constancy. It means consistently, consistency. We have to be consistent in our walk. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit led me to share this message today for many reasons, but one of them being this. It's because during this crisis with the COVID-19, with, with all the situations within our nation that you and I, it's confusing, it's concerning, 
It has brought about within the body of Christ a fear and intimidation that you've backed away and shied away for what God's purpose is. And in these days that are going to lead us up to the coming of the Lord, I believe, in the near future, in these days, if you can't handle COVID, you ain't going to be able to handle what's coming next. Because, And you can't handle COVID if you're not in the Word and if you're not praying and allowing the fire of the Holy Spirit to set you on fire and you, begin, you become consistent in your walk with the Lord. That it's not just a haphazard thing, that you are walking daily in the presence of God. Then you'll sustain, it will, you will be sustained by the fire of God. You will be used in this, these last days. But can I just tell you what's concerning to my soul is people that have talked to me and said, I'm, I'm struggling, I'm, it's difficult. I see young people and young adults and, and adults, and we have a 95-year-old here today and a 91-year-old here today. I, they're not the ones. These ladies are not who I'm talking about. But people of all ages, that they're struggling in their walk with God because they have left the place of the anointed one and they've moved into a place place of the one that it, it, it's honestly a spirit of apathy that has come upon the church a spirit of indifference a, a, a spirit of uh, there's a lack of interest in the things of God you feel like you're just barely able to survive the church of Jesus Christ in these last days are to be on fire and bold moving and flowing in the power of God and that we're to set an example so that as we smears the anointing on us that we can bring to the people around us a message of hope and deliverance before the coming of the Lord hallelujah hallelujah when we're touched by the fire of the Holy Spirit, we grow. You can't just be, you know, oh, I got blessed at youth camp two years ago, and, man, that was an awesome time. But you haven't been touched since then. Uh-uh, uh-uh. It doesn't work that way. You might be here this morning and say, oh, I was touched two weeks ago in service, but since then you haven't hardly given God the time of day. Uh-uh. It don't work that day. You will not last. You will not be able to sustain your Christian walk if you have not set aside time for the Spirit of God to keep you in moving in your life. You don't have to say amen. I'm speaking to somebody here today. Hallelujah. When you To refine cinnamon, it requires fire. They take the plant and they boil the plant, and it separates that inner rind from the harder shell, and it produces a pure oil. I'm here to tell you today, I'm saying, Holy Spirit, touch me by your fire. The next one is calamus. That is a reed that grows in the mud and the mire and the clay. It is the most unlikely place for this plant to grow. It looks impossible. I don't know about you today, but there's been seasons in my life that it, I felt like I was walking through the mud and the mire and the clay. It felt like I couldn't put one foot in front of the other. It felt like that, that I, couldn't, I wasn't going to be able to survive because of the situations that had come up in my life. And it looked impossible in the natural. But a, this calamus and the reason it was used as one of those, those priceless, precious spices is because I love this. It grows tall, and it's a sweet cane. When it's fully grown, the head of the plant fills with oil. And as it fills with oil, it bends over almost in half. My papers, though, I didn't miss this one. It bends over. Almost in half. What are you saying, Miss Rebecca? That's like you and me. It might be difficult things you're walking through with your children. It might be a situation on your job. It might be that you're called into ministry and things have not gone very well for you. You might have people in your family that are rejecting you, people that are defiant, people that are not wanting to follow the ways of the Lord. You might be in a situation that you don't understand, but I'm here to tell you, as you grow in the things of God, let me tell you something. You have to learn by the Spirit of God to pick up one foot and put it in front of the other. No matter how much money or clay or mires around your feet and you have to stand there and grow but when he gets you to the place that he can work in your life and he fills you with the oil of the spirit what happens is you begin to bend over in humility and in surrender and you say lord have your way these places may have been hard but let me just tell you something you might be going through a situation today and it might be like this difficult but can i tell you something when you come out of it 
Let me tell you, when you come out of it, God, the anointing of the Lord, will use that thing that became your sweet cane and use it to bring glory to his name. You can, you'll be able to minister. Look, I'm going through it right now. I'm blessed. I thank God for all that he's done for me already. But there's days it's just downright hard. I'm just going to tell you. But can I tell you something? If he allowed this in my life, there is a reason. And this is what comes out of my mouth, and you listen to me. I'm telling you that when the, I get through this thing, he's going to get a lot of glory. And when I get, as I walk through it and get to the other side, I, he's already brought people into my path that I have been able to speak hope to and pray for. But your thing you're walking through, he can, he's going to do the same for you. I'm going to tell you a story real quick. Everybody say amen. My daddy, years ago when I was a teenager, daddy came here to preach and moved our family here. God was using him, and there were people in the church that became disgruntled. They didn't like his preaching because he preached holiness. They didn't like, he preached no compromise. He preached the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And people, some men rose up against Daddy, and they set him up and falsely accused him of, of an incident that he did not do. But as a man and a pastor and just a child of God, he faced that thing and he looked at Beth Black is sitting out there. Beth's last name used to be Brown. She went from brown to black. <laughs> but Beth's daddy, his name was Brother W.W. W. Brown. I'll never forget Brother Brown because, first of all, he was a man of wisdom. Second of all, he had such an anointing on him. He led worship. And he'd get up in the services and lead the old-time hymns of the church and shout all over that platform. But it wasn't, brother, he was, it wasn't a, uh, that that was his gift. He was actually a carpenter. But what he, the Holy Ghost would anoint him and Jesus would be exalted. It was awesome. I'll never forget it, though. My daddy, he was crushed. He was so hurt by what was said about him. And he went to Brother Brown. He said, Brother Brown, what am I going to do? He stood to lose everything. And Brother Brown looked at him and said, nothing. Not one thing. Wait, but Brother Brown, you don't understand. This has been said, and I got to defend myself. No, 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 now you're not going to do that. He said, nothing. Doesn't that sound like him? You're not going to do it, Brother Moore. You're not going to do anything to defend yourself. He said, Brother Brown, he said, the Lord will take care of it. Now listen to me. I want you to listen to what happened. During that time, Daddy reminds me, this is symbolic of, of how the Holy Spirit uses things and works them in our lives. I watched my Daddy. He grew through that experience. He became so full of the power of God. He walked under such an anointing in the midst of the mud and the mire and the clay. But listen to what happened. The three men that accused him falsely of committing a horrific sin... It, it spread throughout this city and tainted. It looked as if it would taint his reputation. But God, one of the men on his dying bed, he was dying with cancer. He said, tell Brother Moore to come. He only had a few days to live. Get Brother Moore here. And they were like, what? And he, they said, he said, get, I cannot die without talking to Brother Moore. My daddy, under the anointing, walked into that room and the man said, I need to ask you to forgive me for what I've done to you. He said, I need to ask you to forgive me because everything I said was wrong. It was false. Will you forgive me? And Daddy said, I've already forgiven you. He said, will you pray for me? I don't want to go to hell. I don't want this in my life. And my Daddy, the one that had been bruised and crushed by man, turned and laid hands on him and led that man to the Lord on his dying bed. One of the other men worked for the city. And he was younger. But he came to my daddy, begging my daddy to forgive him. He said, my life has been messed up. Everything's out of sorts. He said, I can't function like this. I lied about you. Please forgive me. Will you pray for me? Daddy prayed with him, and he came to know the Lord. The third man came and talked to my daddy a little while later. He said, Brother Moore, I'm so sorry for what I've done. 
will you forgive me? I want to tell you something. Whatever stage you find yourself in, God gives you that anointing to go through those times of grief, those times of pain or suffering and things that are not pleasant in your life. And he can give you the anointing to go through that. In that season, you, can, you will be able to testify. Because I want to tell you something. When that happened to my daddy, can I tell you something? The anointing was greater on him after that than I had ever seen. I'm telling you, God put his hand on him. This, the, this plant, the more it's bruised, the sweeter the fragrance that comes out. Keisha. It's a root word that, that is for dad, and it means to bow down or s to stoop low. And it means to bow in honor. It represents us as believers bowing in honor to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. See, these spices were going to put together carefully. They couldn't be used on just anybody. It wasn't for the ordinary man. It was for the called ones. It was not to be tampered with, nothing changed about it because it was priceless. It was, God said, don't add anything to it, don't take anything away. This is my anointing oil. It's a mixture that I want to smear and rub on these men that have been chosen to minister and service Israel. And I'm telling you this morning, the Holy Spirit works on us. And as he begins to smear on the presence of God, the anointing of the Spirit, and rub those precious, these, these spices that are symbolic of him working in us, our, our lives are transformed. We, we begin to move from our carnal nature and become more like the, oil, uh, the Lord. The anointing oil was used to consecrate and set apart. And Aaron and his sons were going to minister unto the Lord. But what does this have to do with us? The church here at the assembly at Augusta. Why are you preaching this, Miss Rebecca? Because there's a lot of people under the sound of my voice. Some of you have giftings and callings. They're without repentance, the Bible says. And some of you move in your giftings and callings, and some of you don't. Some of you use it, and you decide, well, God has delayed m me moving and stepping into my next season, so let me just make this happen. And you become like Abraham, where you mess up because you've gotten ahead of God's timing. Because if God has not already allowed it, you're not ready. But when you're ready, and the Holy Spirit has finished working in your life, then he will step, make, cause you to step into your next season of where he wants you to be and your next position that you will flow under a greater anointing. Some of you under the sound of my voice, you say, well, that doesn't apply to me because I really don't do anything. I, I, I don't really have anything that's outstanding or any giftings. Or, it's not about that. If you're a believer saved by the blood of Jesus Christ and you've been born again and washed in that blood, Jesus says you're chosen. He says, you're, I have handpicked you. For such a time as this, like Esther, to declare the works of the Lord, to declare his praises. And I'm looking, I want you to look at me. Let me just tell you something. You're here and you have been hesitant to move and step in to what God has called you to do. You've been waiting and relying on your own self, your own abilities. And God says it's not about your abilities. It's about your willingness and obedience to step into where I'm calling you to step so that I can anoint you for the service of the kingdom. Do you understand what I'm saying? And if you're one of those people here this morning, you say, well, where, does that, where do I fit into that equation? Let me just tell you, you're all called. We're not all called to do the same thing. Thank God. But can I tell you, there's positions that need to be filled. There's a position that's of the highest importance to me, and it's prayer. We need women and men of prayer that will stand for this church and stand in the gap for this city and for this nation and call on Jesus to send the revival fire of his spirit to cross this nation and revival come. I'm telling you, I believe there's going to be a mighty move of God and a revival come like we've never experienced in these last days. But you're part of the called. And you have a responsibility to answer that call. God's wanting you to take, uh, the, the, to look at the altar of your heart, and you need to place it in the, to the, give it to the Holy Spirit to deal with, and ask Him to transform you. And He wants to mark you. People will be drawn to you as you flow in the anointing. 
I don't care where you go or what you do, people will be drawn to you. You might pray. I heard somebody the other, I'm going to tell you, yesterday, Faye, Faye and Jesse have taken me and Baxter. We're like their children. They feed us. And can I tell you, I'm so spoiled by her right now that it's going to be hard for me to get past this. But she called yesterday. I was so sick. She called yesterday. She goes, would you like to have some chicken pot pie for dinner? And I was like, well, yeah. Because <laughs> Brother Stanley was working here at the church, and Sister Stanley wasn't able to cook any food. I was like, well, there's dinner. <laughs> she came, and she walked in my door. I promise you, she walked in my door. She laid the food down, and she turned and looked at me, and the Spirit of God came all over Faye. Now, Faye didn't know what all was going on with me. She laid her hands on me and prayed for me. Pauline called me on the phone. She started praying for me. Miss Yvonne called me, praying for me on the phone. My mama, I called my mama. I said, Mama, I got to have prayer. Can I tell you why I'm saying that? The anointing. They've been smeared with the anointing. They stepped into the opportunity when it was there. They seized the moment. And this body of believers, some of us haven't been taking advantage of those moments when the Lord could use us. And he's, listen, he's stirring up your spirit this morning. He's calling you and he's stirring you. He's wanting us to get to the next place in him because the seasons that we're in, right, this season we're in right now, can I tell you, it's important for the kingdom's sake. Where you stand in your relationship with the Lord and how you move and, and have your being in the Holy Ghost, it's important. Psalm 92 says, your anointing has made me strong. It's made me mighty. You've empowered my life for triumph by pouring fresh oil over me. Are you here this morning in need of fresh touch of the Spirit of God? Do you, can I tell you, I don't want you to get so bogged down in your past. Look, if you failed, if you, it's not over for you. If there's, if there's, if you've been, if in your lifetime there's been areas that you have not always been faithful, or if you've been neg negligent in your walk and your, your life with the Holy Spirit, with the Lord, it's not over for you. I'm here to tell you it's not over. And I feel that in my spirit, it's not over. God can redeem that, but listen, even if we've been slack, I said earlier that I, I've been praying this week against the spirit of apathy over us in this church. That we would move into the things of God, that we would be awakened, our spirits awakened to the voice of God, that our ears would no longer be dull and our eyes would no longer be dim, but we would flow and move by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I believe he's dealing with some hearts here today. This isn't a time to shy away and back down. He says, well, you know, I don't have the spirit of fear, but of power, might, and a, a sound mind. Listen, Paul, that was the Sanhedrin that wrote most of the New Testament. I loved it when he said, well, I don't come to you with, you know, because if you think you're not qualified, I'll tell you why I'm saying this scripture. Paul says, I, I, I don't come to you with enticing words of man's wisdom. But I come to you with the demonstration and the power of the Holy Ghost. Rebecca Stanley, can I just tell you something? I, I, I'm almost done. Go ahead and say amen. Um, I want to tell you something. This is the, I, I've walked through some of this stuff my own self, but I always have been led worship. I always, I always did worship, and I am a worshiper. Whether I'm here or not, I worship. I, I spend time in the presence of the Lord. I, I long for it. I live for it. I, I cannot even tell you what I feel when I can just go and get in his presence, presence and what I experience, and I, I hunger for that. I'm saying that from my heart. I hunger for it. But years ago, in the early 90s, we were in the days of revival, and God had mightily touched my life. He had cleaned me up, turned my life around, set me on solid ground and i'm just telling you i never have been the same because the spirit of god touched me but during those days we sang and worshiped and had revival services and I, my voice just gave out and one day i started noticing i couldn't sustain the notes i couldn't I, I i could hardly sing i would just give out it would just stop and i was like what in the world and so i had to go to the doctor and 
I walked in and he said, give me an E. I said, I can't give you an E. He said, go E. And I went and this horrible sound came out. I said, see, I told you I couldn't do it. And the doctor, he examined me and my vocal cords had nodules on them. He said, you're going to have to do what I tell you to do or you're looking at surgery. And I know people that's had surgery on their vocal cords and it was never the same. And to me that was important. I didn't want to lose my voice completely. I was like, Jesus, why are you allowing this to happen? I'm a worshiper, Lord. That is my gifting. You hear me? He said, you have to do what I tell you to do. And he said, they, the nodules have not calcified, so that's good news. He said, but you have to keep your mouth shut. You can't talk or sing for eight weeks. I was homeschooling my children, and I had a bell. And believe me, when I was aggravated and couldn't go, <laughs> or when I needed their attention, it was quite, it was humorous. Listen, it was something else. But you say, why are you telling that story? Because in a time that looked, yeah, I was discouraged by that time. That was one of the times I felt like I couldn't put one foot in front of the other. Now, there's been other times in my life, but this is just a simple example of what I went through. And I felt like I couldn't put one foot in front of the other. I, what you, Lord, I just, I'm a worshiper, and now I can't worship. But I, during those times, somebody had given me a book that said, Keep a Quiet Heart by Elizabeth Elliot. And it just shared experiences of hers, of things she had walked through. And it encouraged my heart, but more than that, Instead of focusing on that I couldn't talk or I couldn't sing, I began to spend more and more time in his presence. And all of a sudden, it didn't matter to me if I could ever sing again. It was the, the experience I had in his presence that meant more to me than anything else in the world. And those times were so precious, I wouldn't take anything for it. I grew in the Lord during those times. I, I have to just tell you, I've never looked back whether I ever sing another note. Now, for 65, I can still sing. I can't believe it. But my mama's 91. She can still sing. I'm thankful. But can I tell you what happened? During that time of my life, now, I want you to hear me. I am not qualified to preach. I don't have the, the education. I don't have the training. I only went to one year of Bible school, and I didn't even finish. I, I didn't go back. I couldn't afford it. And things changed in my life. But during that season when I got before the Lord for those eight weeks and was quiet, the Lord started dealing with my heart. And he told me, he said, I've put my hand on you and I've chosen you and called you to preach. And my first thing was I laughed at God and said, you've got to be kidding. I can't do that. I, I don't preach. And you would think, well, did you start preaching right away? No. The Holy Spirit began to train me, and he began to open up our opportunities for me to teach. And then all of a sudden, I got to preach. Now, look, I don't compare myself to anybody, and I know I'm not. Nobody's like me. They better be thankful. But what I'm, the point, I'm, this is no glory to Rebecca. Trust me. There's some hard knots here. What I want you to hear is this. What I did do was trust in him. And all I know is that I only have the responsibility to open my mouth and then the Holy Spirit takes over. You hear what I'm saying? I want the musicians to come. Listen to me. Listen to me. That last verse that we, I, I, I want to read this last part of this verse in this translation. It says, but you are God's chosen treasure, his priest who are kings. A spiritual nation set apart as God's devoted ones. He called you out of darkness to experience his marvelous light, but, and now he claims you as his very own. But this is the part. He did this so that you would broadcast his glorious works throughout the world. Church, can I tell you something? Pastor Stanley, Pastor Brandon, Pastor Heather, Pastor Lydia, they can't do it all. We are, God is calling and requiring of us to allow him to smear his anointing on us and equip us for service. He's calling you to do it. You've been handpicked. 
for this time, this season, like never before. I don't care what you've done in the past. This is a new day. It's a new season. And God has, has done this. And what, what I love is that <laughs> he proves himself faithful. You may be sitting here saying, but I'm frustrated, Miss Rebecca, because I haven't seen God do this in my life. I've been asking for this. He, this hasn't happened. And, and I, 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 I just feel like I'm just lost. I don't know how I'm going to handle this because I can't see anything coming to, to fruition in my life that I thought was going to. Can I just tell you right there, you thought. Quit thinking about what you think God's will is for your life and step out of your, what you think you're gifted to do and step over here and say, all right, you said I'm called. Here I am, Lord. I surrender. I know you're dealing in my life. I can yield myself to you. And then he takes over. Stand to your feet. I don't know if this has made sense to you, but I feel like the Holy Spirit is dealing with some hearts here today. I, I feel like that there's been such an oppression over some of God's people. I feel like that they wanted to give up and they're just barely making it. But then there's others of you that you've been holding on but you still haven't, you just don't know where I quite fit in. Let me just tell you something. Lay it aside. I'm speaking, I know by the Holy Spirit I'm speaking to somebody this morning. Will you close your eyes? Oh, Jesus. Do what you do, Lord. Do what only you can do, Jesus. Touch every heart. When you try to work it yourself, you mess up. But he's faithful and his promises are yes and amen. You may, it might just be you being in the position to pray for your family. To stand for them and their salvation. But you're weary. It might be that neighbor next door you've been praying for and, and you're discouraged because you haven't seen any sign of any change. The anointing is on you. He equips you and he anoints you. some of you out of your comfort zone this morning. Some of the things that you, you're comfortable in the place that you are. God's want to stretch you this morning. If you're wanting that, if you're willing to say, yes, Lord, I surrender, I yield myself to you, come, Holy Spirit, and anoint me. I want you to lift your hands to heaven all over the place. Come on.
this tent, listen to me, or you may be watching online, I don't know. This is what I want you to hear. You have tried to make it your own way, and your own ability, and you're full of fear, and you're full of doubt. And you have, the enemy has brought that against your spirit, man. And he has deceived you into believing that lie that God has not, that he has forgotten you and that he's not going to fulfill his plan in your life. I break that off of you right now in the name of Jesus. I say by the blood of Jesus, that is being knocked off your shoulders. Hallelujah. Listen, there's a scripture in Isaiah 10, 27 that says the yoke upon you, upon your shoulder, and the yoke upon your neck, it says the anointing will break it off. And the anointed one is Jesus. And the Messiah is the anointed one. And it's Jesus. And I break that off of you right now in the name of Jesus. Things spoken over your spirit. Things that have been done against you and spoken against you to doubt. It calls you to question what God has called you to do. You just, your responsibility is to say yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. To your will, to your way, Lord. Yes. Yes, Jesus. I surrender, God. Some of you in this tent right now, you're, you're, you've been faithful. You've been servants. You've been, you have, you have been working in the kingdom, but you're tired and you're weary. And I pray a fresh touch. Lift your hands, a fresh touch. Fresh touch, whatever position you're in, fresh touch. Fresh touch of the oil. Fresh touch of his spirit. May the oil of the spirit of God bring refreshing to your soul today. May he bring strength to your body, to your spirit man. May he make you strong and powerful in his might. May you walk in a boldness and authority like you've never walked in before. Come on, lift your hands, church. Lift your hands. Receive it right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Freshness of your spirit, God. A freshness of your spirit. troubled about our, our, our youth and our young adults. The enemy's trying to deceive and destroy. I said the enemy's trying to deceive. He's trying to destroy I need some believers praying right now in the Holy Ghost. I need you to lift your hands and begin to pray and intercede. For all of our young people, where's Heather? Give the baby to somebody. Or you can come up here, I don't care. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, church, pray and intercede for the youth. 
for the young adults. Come on. Come on. Come on. Lift your voices. In the name of Jesus, I say, strong man, you bow to the name of Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus, take your hands off and you must bow to the name of Jesus, the name above every other name. Woo, the name of Jesus and the power of your name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I pray over every mind, pray over every mind, over their subconscious minds, their emotions. I cover them with the blood of Jesus. I pray a protection upon them. Be a shield before them and a shield behind them. Woo! In the name of Jesus. And what God has set in motion, no demon in hell can stop it and no man can stop it. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, church. I need some intercession going up. There's warfare going on right now in the spirit. We declare righteousness and we declare holiness. We declare consecrated before God. Hallelujah. That's who you are. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Rise up, rise up, rise up. Rise up, rise up. Hallelujah. Take your position. I come against the lies of the enemy. Mm, I speak truth to your spirit. I speak truth to your spirit, man. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, shakototototamakataya. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we do come against the spirit of apathy that has been placed upon so many of us in this room. God, I come against the lies of the enemy that it's okay just to sit down and let other people do it. But God, I come against that in the name of Jesus that the saints will rise up right now. Father, that they will not be weary in well-doing. They will not cower in fear of what is going on around them, but that their spirit man will rise and say, I will not be fearful because God does not give me a spirit of fear, but a power and a strong mind. God, I speak, I speak just a boldness to come upon them in the name of Jesus. Lord, I come against the lies of the enemy who keeps telling them to sit back and be quiet. Do not stir the pot, but God, I ask that they will just be bold and they will have discernment to speak wisdom into the circumstances and the people around them, that we don't have to be fearful of what the world is going to say because God is on our side. We don't have to be fearful of what the person to the right or the left because the spirit that is within us is going to rise. Look, I want to say something. We're almost done. You ain't in no hurry. God's doing something in some hearts. You're in the gap right now for some people that are in a, in a place of, of decision. You hear what I'm saying? I want you right now to come in agreement. Bethany's going to pray. This is a generation. The enemy's trying to steal them. You hear what I'm saying? We ain't gonna let him have them. Come on, we're not gonna let him have them, no. Uh-uh, uh-uh, there's too much invested here. Yay, in Jesus' name. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord, the only name that is above every name. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in the name of Jesus. We come against the strong man that has come against us as 
the church as a body and God we call in the lost people who are confused God they're confused God we come, we come against the strong man spirit that has lulled us to sleep as a church in the name of Jesus we are not a social club we are not a social club we are calling in the lost God bring them in in the name of Jesus God I call for representation within our churches Father God that these people would come in and they would find representation God of people who are going before you on behalf of them Father God God I pray that you would bring names and faces to our minds, Father God, that we may not even know in the name of Jesus. And God, I come against every witchcraft spirit in the name of Jesus. I come against it in the name of Jesus. We break it. We bind it. God, whatever we loose here on earth, it is loosed in heaven in the name of Jesus. And we come against that in the name of Jesus. Satan, you have no place. You have no place in us. You cannot silence us in the name of jesus because we serve a mighty god and he is greater than every attack of the enemy in the name of jesus i speak healing over your people in the name of jesus and we say that enough is enough because we are standing in the gap for these people who are confused and who are bound who are in our churches god we come against the insiders god with the witchcraft in the name of jesus <laughs> see you and we bind you witchcraft spirit in the name of Jesus we are dethroning the strong man today we are dethroning the strong man today in the name of Jesus and you can help me if you want to but I am dethroning the strong man in the name of Jesus God, I pray that you would raise up the intercessors, God, and refresh their spirit, God, that we would surround the perimeter, Father God, in the spirit, that we would surround the perimeter, Father God, and those of us who are off the wall, God, I pray that you would put us back on our watchman positions in the name of Jesus. God, we need those watchman positions, Father God, and I, I call them in, and I draw them in in the name of Jesus. I pray that you would bring conviction, God, bring the convicting power of the Holy Spirit right now over all of us, Father God, in the name of Jesus. If you're in here and you have children or grandchildren, raise your hand. Keep your hands up. Joshua's going to pray over our families, over, our, over moms and dads, grandmas, grandpas, aunts and uncles, that we remain strong in our faith and we pass down to the next generation the things of God and the Spirit of God that they will not be stolen from under the covering of the Spirit of God. You understand what I'm saying? Pray, son. The Lord spoke first. Enough. Enough. Where are you, my prayer warriors? Have I not spoken into you? Have I not raised you up? Why do you allow the attacks on your children? Why do you allow the attacks on your church? Why do you allow this to happen? Where is your prayer closet? Lift up your voice now. Amen. It is not the job of your children to take care of themselves. That lies on you first. Come on. Now is the time you lift your hands. Now is the time you cry out to your father. It is your job to oversee them. I've called you out first. If you want to see a generation, if you want to see a success, you have to put in the time. Can you not see what's happening to this nation? Can you not see what's happening to this unit? The children are crying. They're being lied to. They're being contaminated. They're being deceived. You're supposed to stand behind them. They need your protection. When generations shift, that transitional period is very scary. There's a gap there. And if you don't fill that gap, the enemy will get them in transition. Don't you dare stop now. Don't you dare let the enemy have his hand on your children. If he can push them off the promise, 
he will have won. If he can have them accept defeat, he will rob them of victory. If he can convince them that this is the new normal, they'll never go back. This is not his place. I bind him in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice now. This is your intercession time. Play for me, please. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come against the enemy. I bind his hands in the name of Jesus. The anointing is the breakthrough. The anointing is the victory. Through magnification of your name, Father, we'll see victory and defeat of the enemy. I place a wall of fiery protection in between me and the strong man. And I bind you in Jesus' name. You will leave this place. This is not your territory. You've been here too long. We will send you invitation. You will go in Jesus' name. I declare this a place of the Lord. And over every family, I decree the anointing will fall in Jesus' name. The promises of God will stand. The place he called you to, you will walk there. If you want to be a trailblazer, you have to realize you're going to walk into the bushes for a minute. It's not going to be all comfortable all the time. The reason of the paved road is because someone's gone before and done the work. It's your turn now. Just because there's something there doesn't mean it's impossible. You have to walk there. But you have to believe he will clear the path. You have to walk there. He's equipped you with the clothing, with the tools to do it, but you have to walk there. Parents, I bless you with wisdom and discernment. I bless you with an anointing that the enemy cannot touch. He will clothe you with gladness. You will rejoice in the Lord. You will be be free and you will be made glad in the name of our God. We will stand today and take victory together. Together we will stand. Apart from each other we'll fall. We are a body. Take arm in arm and go and go. Don't be afraid to get up and march. Don't be afraid to get up and shout. It doesn't matter if you wake up your kids in the middle of the night. They should join you in prayer. This enough is enough. The reason it's coming against them so strong is because of what's about to happen. Seasons are changing. Yeah. And the enemy knows it. Pastor Jensen Franklin said something. The enemy may have came in walking, but remind him he's going to leave crawling. Amen. In the garden, that Satan came in as a serpent. He walked in and started talking, but God made sure he left crawling. And Amen. strong man, you will leave on your belly. You will Amen. leave under our feet. Yeah. If you got to stomp the ground a few times like we used to do, you better go ahead and start doing it now. Because we're claiming that in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. This is... I had not planned on asking these folks to come up here and pray, but God's doing something in here. Tuesday is prayer day. Tuesday we pray, we come together as as a church, we pray together and seek God. This week's assignment is our families. I want to tell you something. Greater days are coming. See, I believe and I prophesy that there will be great revival hit this nation. I pray and prophesy over Assembly at Augusta. There's going to be revival in this house because there's a hunger that's stirring up in this house. The young and the old are going to come and be in the altars seeking the face of God. I declare and prophesy by the word of the Lord that the city of Augusta and the surrounding areas will be flooded with people hungry for God and the presence of God and we'll see a move of God. It's going to happen. Don't think that we're, we're defeated. We're not. This is the season he's moving us into before the coming of the Lord. So how many say amen to that? Amen. Pastor, where is my husband? Well, you heard from two generations today. And I be, I, I'm in total agreement with what Joshua said. Uh, let me, let me, I'm going to let you go, but I, wanna, I want you to understand. He said a mouthful. Don't dare stop. You that are parents, don't dare stop. Our kids are in limbo. Listen. As a church, we're like everybody else trying to figure out what are we going to do post-pandemic. 
Did you know that right now we're in a situation where we're, I'm just going to be honest with you. Some say leadership shouldn't share everything, but I, I like you to know where we are. We're struggling to figure out what we're going to do with our kids. How are we going to minister to our kids? You know why we're struggling? Because we've come to the place that everybody except, expects staff to do all of that. And I'm going to tell you, we don't have enough staff to do what needs to be done for our kids. We need ranger commanders. We need people to teach kids. Even if it ends up not being rangers, even if it ends up not being girls' ministries as we've done before, here's what I know. There are those of you among us, you've been trained. Year after year, you ministered. There's no retirement in the ministry. What God has equipped you to do, let him pour the anointing oil on it and fire that sucker back up and let's raise up this next generation. You know, we're, I love being able to stand behind them and clap. I love to be able to encourage them, but I want to tell you something. There's no room for us to quit. And I'll tell you what, we're always best when every generation's involved anyway. We're always best when every generation is involved. It's a challenging word today. Confirmed by the Word of God. And now, Miss Giveaway here, we need some ushers. She wants to set you on fire, so she's got a bag of fireballs for you. This, I don't know what else is in here that, that she described of all those four elements, but I know the cinnamon is in here. So get yourself some anointing before you leave. Clayton's passing them out now. I want to thank, hey guys, thank you for making this a great day. I tell you, it feels like homecoming, Brandon. Now we're going to be under this tent for the rest of the month. I, we'll probably keep 830 inside because there's some that just, I'll, I'll tell you something else too. It was cold out here at 830, Jack. It was cold. But here's the deal. We'll be under the tent for the rest of this month. Would you invite a neighbor, a friend, someone, and tell them to come on out? We'll give you more details. There's going to be some other stuff toward the end of the month. We're going to have our fall festival out here. And uh, so we're, we're planning things. Be looking for it on the Facebook page. You'll be getting calling posts.